In the third section of our lecture, now we will talk about different causes of facial paralysis. Different causes of facial paralysis include Bell's palsy, then we have Melkerson syndrome, and then different infections and trauma can also lead to facial paralysis. Causes of facial paralysis can be central causes and then in the central causes we have brain abscess, pontine gliomas, poliomyelitis, multiple sclerosis and then the intracranial causes or intracranial part which includes cerebello pontine angle we have acoustic neuroma, uh, meningioma, congenital cholestitoma, metastatic carcinoma, meningitis, idiopathic causes in which no ca cause is known. These include Bell's palsy, Melkerson syndrome, infections, like acute suppurative otitis media, chronic suppurative otitis media, herpes zoster, malignant otitis externa, trauma like surgical mastoidectomy and stapedectomy, accidental fracture of temporal bone, neoplasm like uh, malignancies of external and middle ear, uh, gallus nerve neuroma, metastasis to temporal bone from cancer of breast, bronchus, prostate. Then extracranial part uh, like malignancy of parotid gland, surgery of parotid, accidental injury in parotid region and neonatal facial injury. Systemic diseases like diabetes, hypothyroidism, uremia, uh, polyarthritis nodosa, Wegener's granulomatosis, and sarcoidosis. Very all of these can lead to facial paralysis. So many causes of facial paralysis. Sometimes patient uh, they sleep at night all well, they walk, uh, wake up in the morning and they have face turned to one side. So facial paralysis is not uncommon and very common condition that leads to this is Bell's palsy and usually no ca known cause is present. So all these causes can lead to facial paralysis. We have central causes, we have intracranial, idiopathic, infections, trauma, neoplasm, and we have some uh, extracranial uh, factors and also systemic diseases that can lead to uh, facial paralysis. Leprosy and leukemia are also systemic diseases. So, so many systemic diseases can affect facial nerve and cause facial paralysis. Demyelinating disease also. Bell's palsy. Bell's palsy is idiopathic peripheral facial paralysis or paresis of acute onset. It's acute onset, very sudden, Idiopathic cause is not known and peripheral facial paralysis or paresis, loss of sensations, loss of movement and there is uh, tilting of the face to one side. Usually the tilting is on the uh, normal side because on the normal side the face muscles are strong so there is they pull the face to the normal side because the other side it's 
weak and it cannot control that movement. This is damage to neuronal cell bodies in corticobulbar tract and this can cause uh, affect the muscles on the opposite side. So Bell's palsy. Etiology of uh, Bell's palsy, viral infections, uh, then we have uh, vascular ischemia, decreased supply of blood, leading to decreased supply of oxygen. It can be primary ischemia or it can be secondary due to some other causes. Hereditary also can lead to Bell's palsy. Autoimmune disorders can lead to Bell's palsy. Next, the clinical features, how the patient will have, pre will present. There is loss of wrinkling, the, the person who is affected, they cannot cause wrinkling of the forehead. Then white palpebral fissure, this is palpebral fissure, it becomes white and broad. Epiphora is increased uh, uh, secretion from the eye, increased tearing from the eye. Absence of nasolabial fold and there is drooping of the angle of the mouth. All these are common sim uh, presentations of patient with Bell's palsy, drowning of the face, drooping of the face, epiphora, loss of nasolabial fold. If you see, it's very plain, no nasolabial folds. Epiphora, there is wild palpebral fissure and loss of forehead wrinkles. Diagnosis is uh, how we can differentiate by from different conditions. History is important and complete autological and head and neck examination. Yeah, this is the patient present with headache. There is uh, changes in quality of tears produced, increased sensitivity to sound, pain behind the ear is present, pain around the jaw is present, there is a facial drooping in the corner, drooling and changes in the amount of saliva, saliva produced and the inability to close the eye. Patient cannot close the eye properly, so because the eye remains open, there are chances they can get keratitis or infection or inflammation of the cornea. So all these are the presentation, presenting features of the patient. Careful history is important for the diagnosis and to make the differential diagnosis. Uh, complete auto ear examine and head and neck examination, x-ray studies and blood test can be performed such as total blood count, peripheral smear, sedimentation rate, blood sugar and serum test are performed. Nerve excitability test, we already mentioned we can perform minimal nerve excitation and maximum nerve stimulation also. Localizing the site of lesion is important where the lesion is present, central, intracranial, outer, outside the cranium, all these should be noticed or whether it is uh, from some systemic diseases or it can be idiopathic. <coughs> Treatment is reassurance and then relief of pain by analgesics, care of the eye. Eye must be protected uh, against uh, exposure keratitis. So these and then physiotherapy and massage of the facial muscles is important. Bell's palsy is uh, curable. If treatment start early, it's sometimes 100% cure can. Medical management is steroids like prednisolone is used and other drugs uh, sometimes can also be used. Surgical treatment of um, is um, nerve decompression is done. If this is the normal nerve, 
Sometimes if it is compressed, there can be swelling of the nerve. Compressed nerve, it should be decompressed by removing the pressure from the nerve. So nerve decompression should be done. It relieves the pressure from the nerve fibers and improves the circulation. Prognosis. Uh, most patients recover fully, 100% recovery in most patients. Some recover incompletely and may be left with some stigma of degeneration. So some recover fully, some might have slight uh, stigma left which can represent that there is some degeneration of the nerve present. Uh, recurrent facial palsy can occur if once it can be re 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 repeated also. Then what's Melkerson syndrome? Melkerson syndrome again it's idiopathic disorder like uh, Bell's palsy but it is uh, consists of a triad which is represented by facial paralysis swelling of the lips and fissured tongue. If you see there is paralysis or drooping of the face on one side along with swelling of the lips and if you see the tongue, tongue is usually fissured. In Melkerson syndrome there is recurrent facial palsy and usually it can be bilateral facial paralysis instead of one side like Bell's palsy. Infections that can lead to uh, facial uh, paralysis, herpes zoster orticus is also known as Ramsey-Hunt syndrome, herpes zoster orticus. In this facial paralysis is present along with vesicular rash in the external auditory canal. Here you can see vesicular rash which is characteristic of herpes zoster infection. Herpes zoster is a viral infection associated with vesicles or rash along with facial paralysis and there is loss of taste on the anterior two-third of the tongue also. These are the features of herpes zoster orticus. Traumas that can lead fracture of temporal bone. This is the um, uh, two types of fractures are uh, pre usually present. This is the um, we have uh, this longitudinal and uh, transverse. Transverse fracture and longitudinal fracture. Two types of fractures occur as a result of the blow to the temporal bone. Blow to the temporal bone is common with the punch or with the fall or with the accidents and it can be two types of fractures. We have transverse or longitudinal fracture. Longitudinal transfers or mixed means both can be present or it can be either longitudinal or transfers. Paralysis is due to intraneural hematoma, compression by bony spicule or transaction of nerve. All these can lead to facial paralysis. Now, important differences between the longitudinal and transverse fractures of the temporal bone. If it's longitudinal or if it's transverse. Frequency, how frequent they are. Longitudinal is more common. Again, if you see, this is the longitudinal fracture. This is the transverse fracture. Longitudinal are more common, lot more common. 80% are longitudinal, only 20% is transverse. Fracture line runs parallel to long axis of Petrus pyramid, starts at squamous part of temporal bone to end at foramen lacerum. And here there is um, fracture line is squamous part of temporal bone to end at foramen lacerum. 
runs across the petrous, starts at foramen magnum or jugular foramen towards the foramen spinosum. So how they run, it's different. Bleeding from the ear, it's common in uh, longitudinal type of fracture due to injury to tegmen and tympanic membrane and it's absent in transverse type because tympanic membrane is intact. Cerebrospinal fluid autoria. Sometimes due to injury to the skull, uh, there is leakage of cerebrospinal fluid also. Auto is for ear, rhea is flow. So leakage of cerebrospinal fluid from the ear. It is present in longitudinal mixed with blood, absent in transfers. Structures injured in uh, longitudinal tegmen, ossicle and tympanic membrane in transverse, usually labyrinth or eighth cranial nerve is injured. Hearing loss is conductive type in longitudinal, sensory, neural, and transverse. Vertigo is less often due to concussion in one and in transverse it's severe because facial nerve, eighth nerve is involved, which is vestibulocochlear nerve, and it affects the balance. And facial paralysis, less 20% delayed onset, nerve is injured in tympanic segment, distal to geniculate ganglion. And facial paralysis is common in transverse type of fracture. So longitudinal is more common, but facial paralysis is more in the transverse as compared to uh, longitudinal and it's immediate in onset. In that case, it's delayed in onset. So common differences between the fractures, two fractures of the temporal bone. Ear or mastoid surgery. Mastoid is the bone present behind the ear. So mastoid surgery. Facial nerve injured during stepidectomy, tympanoplasty or mastoid surgery. Immediate or delayed paralysis can occur. So during the mastoid surgery or tympanoplasty, if facial nerve get damaged, it can lead to immediate or delayed paralysis. How can operative injuries be avoided? How we can avoid the injuries? Very important, important is we should know the surgical landmarks and we should know the course of the nerve, how it is, um, what is the course of the nerve. So anatomical knowledge of the course of the facial nerve is important. Working along the course and never across it. Along the course, never across it. Across it can damage it. Constant irrigation when drilling to avoid thermal injury and gentle handling of the nerve when it is exposed, avoiding any pressure of instruments on the nerve and not to remove any granulations that penetrate the nerve. All these are very important steps to prevent the injury during the surgery of the facial nerve using magnification so you can see the course of the nerve clearly and you should not damage the nerve. Parotid surgery and trauma to face. Facial nerve injured in surgery of parotid tumors are deliberately excised in malignant tumor. Here if you see parotid gland it can lead to injuries of the facial nerve during the surgery of the parotid gland accidentally or this can be removed uh, uh, deliberately in malignant tumors. Neoplasm, different neoplasm, intratemporal neuroplasm and when we have tumors of parotid gland that can affect the facial nerves. Here if you see the parotid gland tumor, it can affect the facial nerve because of pressure and 
compressions. That was all about this section. Thank you for watching scardia.com.